Ultimate car buying scams. Thinking of buying a new car? Then you're probably like most consumers, afraid and anxious about being ripped off by a car dealer. And your fears are well justified. Consumers in the U.S. lost over $30 billion each year to car buying scams, many of which are easily avoidable, while others may require a little expert help. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and across the way is the always amazing Elizabeth. Thanks, Kevin. In case you're new here, Kevin and I worked inside car dealerships and got to experience car dealership bad behavior firsthand. Since then, over the last several years, we've made it our mission to research how car dealers work, and we have documented tons of scams and tactics used throughout the industry. To any car salesman out there who's tempted to say, these are all outdated, nobody does this stuff anymore, well, Kevin, take it away. To that I say, it's great if the dealership you're working at doesn't do this stuff anymore, but with the launch of our hassle-free car buying service, we have daily contact with dealers as we represent car buyers all around the country. We know a ton more about the entire car industry than any salesman working at one dealership does. The real reason that even we end up avoiding certain dealers is that they turn out to be nothing but con artists. Today, we're going to help you know how to identify them. Also, you should know that you avoid the agony of all of these scams by hiring us to provide you with our hassle-free car buying service. We have the best service by far, and we don't post a bunch of fake reviews for what we do either. We leave the fake tactics to our competitors out there. Well, friends, of course not all car dealers are bad, but it can be a difficult task to figure out which ones are truly honest. Our goal today is to expose the tricks used by the worst offenders so you don't end up becoming another uninformed victim. $30 billion a year is a lot of money, friends. To help determine the risk level of some of these scams, we have rated them on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest risk. The number we've given each scam reflects a combination of how costly it is, how common the occurrence is, and even how likely it is for consumers to fall victim to the scam. Today we're focused on new car scams. Used car scams will come in a follow-up show. We're starting at risk level 4, which is bad, and it ends up getting a whole lot worse. First up at level 4 are nitrogen-filled tires. The risk level has dropped down recently because more and more dealers are discovering that informed car buyers are refusing to pay for this nonsense. You got it. Well, the idea is that if you fill your tires up with pure nitrogen, they will stay inflated for longer and the rubber will degrade slower than if you fill it with regular air. But air is already 78% nitrogen, and over time as you top up your tires, they will become richer in nitrogen anyways as the oxygen molecules slowly escape. But there's no chance nitrogen fill will be worth doing for even $20, much less $400 like dealers often want to charge for it. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Sitting at risk level four as well, Tricking you into signing a lease. This is a lowered payments game. You're looking to buy a car, but you say the payments are too high. The salesman says, if we can get the payments lower with no cash down, will you buy today? The problem is they are putting you into a lease instead of a purchase. Some buyers get bumped into a lease without even being aware of it. The salesman may refer to it as a balloon payment. All we can say is that you must pay close attention to the agreement and make sure that you are not signing a lease. This scam works mainly on people who are tired and in a hurry and simply aren't paying enough attention. At risk level 5 is a real classic, negotiating on the wrong vehicle. A dealer will mislead consumers by giving you pricing on the wrong vehicle. For example, you may think you're negotiating for a 2023 model. Turns out the dealer was negotiating based on a 2022 model, a year older and with more miles. In rare cases, this could be a legitimate error on the part of the salesman, but if you suspect they're doing it on purpose, take your business elsewhere. You can help avoid this problem by requesting a VIN and then using a professional advice service like our help desk to look up the VIN and verify that this vehicle is what they're claiming it is. Also at risk level 5, dealers say manufacturer rebates are only good at MSRP price. Bullshit. (laughs) The dealer will try to convince an unsuspecting buyer that cashback rebates from the manufacturer are only good if you pay MSRP for the vehicle. The Ah. truth is, manufacturer rebates are independent of whatever price you negotiate with a dealer. Don't allow them to factor in rebates when negotiating the price of the new car. Those get deducted at the end when price negotiations are done. Sitting at risk level 6, besides hiding other things, dealers are known for hiding dings, scratches, and other flaws, yes, on new cars too. Especially now with inventory busting at the seams, dealer lots can have plenty of tight spaces, which could easily result in accidents, scratches, and dings on your new car. Even if the car is new, always inspect the vehicle for damage before agreeing to buy it and then driving it off the lot. 
Also at risk level number six, stealing your rebate. Mm. Sometimes manufacturers offer multiple consumer rebates and incentives on one model, and car shoppers may not be aware that they qualify for all of them. If the rebates you qualify for are not shown on your car contract, you'd better believe the dealer is still going to cash in on that rebate and pocket the money themselves. Unfortunately, this lack of transparency creates an opportunity for dealers to take advantage of you in this situation. And as I pointed out, the dealer will try to keep some of these rebates for themselves. You might wonder, how is this possible? Unfortunately, dealers can get away with it because manufacturers don't audit every single sale at a dealership. To cover your bases, call at least two or three local dealers and ask them to list all the rebates and incentives on a particular model. If you're looking at the same car, make sure all the dealers list the same number and dollar value of the incentives. At risk level seven, charging a deposit to hold the vehicle for you. I get asked this all the time. Dealers try to get a deposit to hold or find a car for you. This is usually done on high demand, low supply vehicles that are hard to find, right? Yet the only time a dealer should legitimately ask for a deposit is if they're doing a dealer trade on your behalf. Don't leave a deposit unless you've asked the dealer to do a dealer trade. If you agree to leave a deposit, make sure it's not over $500 and that it's fully refundable. If you agree to hold money down, always do it on a credit card. If a problem occurs later, your card company will help you get that money back. Dealers are notorious for trying to keep consumer deposits when a deal falls through. Man, I hear that one every day. Sitting at risk level 8 are theft protection systems. Dealers love to scare you into thinking your car will be stolen the moment you buy it. But trust us <laughs> when we say that not one employee in the entire dealership will have these bogus theft protection systems installed on their own car. True. Well, so goes the alarm. The dealer claims about this product are ludicrous. They say the police use these theft systems to find your car if it's ever stolen. That's totally false. Ask any police officer in your community about window etching, for example, and they often have no idea what <laughs> it is. They have no idea. Yet, dealers would have you believe that these systems are so common that they are taught in police academy. It's been several years ago that we called window etching the scam of the decade, but that still doesn't stop dealers from still trying to sell it. Topping the list at number one of new car scams are confusing window stickers. This one earns a risk level of eight because we've seen dealers pull this so often Everyone is aware of what a Monroney window sticker is, right? right? It's the official window sticker from the manufacturer. It is not supposed to be removed or tampered with. So here's what happens. The dealer displays a dealer sticker next to the official MSRP sticker. It's what's commonly known as an addendum sticker. It is purposely designed to look official, but its only purpose is to fool buyers into paying more for the vehicle. The dealer added sticker will include options that were installed after the car arrived on the dealer lot from the manufacturer. They're usually worthless and some aren't even options at all, but simply made up charges. For example, you might see things like special value package, which includes fabric protection or charges labeled ADP or ADM. Interestingly, this is an offense hiding in plain sight because ADP and ADM acronyms stand for additional dealer profit and additional dealer markup to add insult to injury, right? They are generally always completely worthless, and some are fake fees. The good news is that you can easily learn how to spot a fake dealer fee. This begs the question, why do dealers do this? Interestingly, contrary to what many people think, dealerships don't actually make most of their profit on the sale of new cars. The car is simply a product to be sold that unscrupulous dealers find a lot of ways to add tons of other stuff to. Sure. The fact is that most dealers make more profit selling you add-ons than they do on the price markup of the vehicle. Car dealerships are just like any other competitive business, and they can and most often will try to maximize these profits in any way they can. The law requires that each new vehicle display a MSRP sticker listing the price of the car plus all the options and a destination charge from the manufacturer. A pro tip right here. The fact that a destination charge from the manufacturer is right on the window sticker clearly demonstrates that a destination charge is already charged in the MSRP. Do not let a dealer itemize it and charge you twice for it. Dealers cannot alter the window sticker in any way. If they are caught, doing so can result in huge penalties. The vast majority of dealers comply with this law, but some will try to confuse you by adding their own window sticker, so to speak, next to the official sticker. If you haven't taken the time to read the FTC's article on tying the sale, you must do it before you go looking at cars, as you'll learn this practice is illegal. Once you learn that tied selling is illegal, you'll never get burned on forced dealer addendums or add-ons again. 
Also, if you never want to miss an upcoming show, while you're visiting on our website, thehomeworkguy.com, sign up for show notifications directly from us by clicking on the yellow button for content notifications. I send out a reminder email for all new shows, which you can check out yourself and also forward to family and friends. For those of you wanting to skip all the nonsense we talked about today, I look forward to speaking with you directly about our hassle-free car buying service. It's easy to find at thehomeworkguy.com. Nobody ever regrets going this route. Today we're going to help you know how to identify them. Also, you should know that you can avoid the agony of all these used car buying scams by hiring us to provide you with our hassle-free car buying service. It works for both new and used cars and in any state in the United States. We have the best car buying service by far and it's the greatest value by a long shot. And you're never going to see a bunch of bought and paid for fake reviews posted for what we do either. We'll leave those fake tactics to unethical creators here on YouTube. Of course, not all car dealers are bad, but it can be a difficult task to figure out which ones are truly honest. Our goal today is to expose the tricks used by some of the worst offenders so you don't end up becoming another uninformed victim. $30 billion a year is a lot of lost money, friends. Indeed. A few of these used car scams are similar to the new car scams we just told you about recently, but for the most part, there are many big differences. To help you determine the risk level of some of these used car scams, we have rated them on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest risk. The number we've given each scam reflects how costly it is, how common the occurrence is, and even how likely it is for consumers to fall victim to the scam. As promised, today we're focused on used car scams, but just days ago we did a new car scams edition. Make sure you check that one out too. We're starting out with scams at risk level 4, which is bad enough, but we end up with scams with a risk level of 10. Unbelievable. Yeah. First up at risk level 4 are the dreaded nitrogen-filled tires. Yes, this is the same scam for new cars too. The risk level has dropped down a bit recently because more and more dealers are discovering that informed car buyers are refusing to pay for this kind of nonsense. Thankfully, many of them have stopped it. Unscrupulous dealers have marketed the idea that if they say you fill your tires with pure nitrogen, they will stay inflated for longer and the rubber might degrade slower than if you fill it with plain old air. But air is 78% nitrogen already. And over time, as you top up your tires, they will become richer in nitrogen anyway as the oxygen molecules slowly escape. But there is no chance nitrogen fill would be worth doing for even $20, much less for $400 or even $900 like we've seen for dealers that want to charge that much. At risk level six, masking engine problems. Ooh. This is a very expensive problem, but it doesn't happen real often, thankfully. Yeah. If a used car has engine problems, putting diesel weight oil in the engine can mask the problems temporarily. Diesel oil is thicker than regular oil. Mechanics say they see this frequently enough. And yes, this is just another reason to have a PPI, a pre-purchase inspection, done on a used car. At risk level seven, odometer fraud. Digital odometers, which were thought to be less susceptible to tampering, can be even easier to manipulate. Unscrupulous dealers are reprogramming digital odometers using relatively inexpensive software and devices made for legally recalibrating faulty odometers. If you're not sure if this is real or not, read this report by NHTSA, which estimates that consumers will lose billions of dollars to odometer fraud each year, and up to 1 in 10 used cars sold may have had their odometers tampered with. Compare the mileage on the odometer with the mileage indicated on the vehicle's maintenance records and get a free Carfax odometer check. At risk level 7, Fake certified used cars. Ooh. True certified used cars are only sold through franchise dealers. Mm -hmm. They have reportedly gone through a manufacturer-backed multi-point inspection process and usually come with some sort of extended warranty. Certified used cars come with a price premium, usually at least a thousand bucks over their non-certified counterparts, and that's on the low side. This creates an attractive opportunity for unscrupulous car dealers. They figure if they slap a certified sticker on a used car, they can sell it for more, and many do exactly that. This trick is usually pulled off by independent used car lots that are not affiliated with any manufacturer. Only franchise car dealers can sell legitimate certified used cars. Make sure to verify that it's a manufacturer-backed program and not just a dealer certification. For the record here at The Homework Guy, we don't recommend certified cars at all. Not worth the extra money. It's just a used car with an extended warranty. Yep. Sitting at risk level 7, fake lowball prices. This happens when the dealer gives you an extremely low price quote on a used car over the phone and encourages you to shop around to see if anybody else can match it. Nobody will match it, but 
When you get to the car lot, they say, let me make sure I can get this price approved by the manager. Of course, they can't, so they try to wear you down. Basically, this scam is used primarily just to get you to come into the store. See our video titled, Don't Negotiate, Do This Instead, If You've Been Burned by This Scam. Anytime the price quote sounds fishy or just too good to be true, have them email you a signed purchase order with the car details and a price quote clearly stated. If they try to pull the scam, you'll have their promise in writing and a potential bait-and-switch complaint to file with the state attorney general's office. Also sitting at risk level 7, stealing your trade-in or your down payment. Yeah. As crazy as this sounds, dealers can literally steal your trade-in or down payment with a stroke of a pen or a tap on the keyboard. The dealer simply changes or removes the amount from the car contract. If you actually did the math, you'd see that your money or your trade wasn't there. Happens way too often. Now sitting at risk level 8, title washing. Hiding the history of a vehicle that's been salvaged, usually due to flooding. Title washing is common after major disasters like floods and hurricanes. The title is washed by transferring a salvaged title to another state that doesn't recognize the salvaged brand. Texas is one of the states that can do this. Use Carfax and AutoCheck to check the vehicle history. Title washing does not get rid of the computer records of title transfers. Also at risk level 8 are theft protection systems. Same as with new cars, dealers love to scare you into thinking that your car is going to be stolen the moment you buy it. But (laughs) trust us when we say that not one employee in the dealership will have these bogus theft protection systems installed on their own car. They say the police use these theft systems to find your car if it's ever stolen. That's totally BS. Yeah. Ask any police officer about window etching for an example, and they often have no idea what you're talking about. Yet dealers would have you believe that these systems are so common that they're taught in police academy. It's been several years since we called window etching the scam of the decade, but it still hasn't stopped dealers from still trying to sell it. Then there's curb stoning at risk level 9. Curb stoners are car dealers that pose as private individuals in order to defraud consumers or skirt the FTC rules pertaining to selling used cars. They will post ads in various classified sites such as Craigslist or even Facebook and pretend to be the owner just trying to sell their vehicle. You may be thinking this is harmless, but these curb stoners are not only breaking the law, they are usually selling vehicles with hidden problems that can affect its value and safety. They usually are selling vehicles that no reputable dealer would even touch. Some even go as far as selling a car that's been totaled and had its title registered in another state to hide the fact. First, always make sure to get that vehicle history report. Keep in mind that this isn't foolproof, but it's a good start. You always need to ask to see the seller's driver's license along with the car's title. If the names don't match, friends, you don't want to buy that car. You definitely don't want to buy it. Nope. Sitting at risk level 10, spot delivery scam, the yo-yo financing. The spot delivery scam, also known as yo-yo financing, is a common scam used mostly against car buyers with bad credit. It occurs when the dealer leads the car buyer into thinking their financing was approved. They let them take the car home only to call them back a few days later or even weeks later to inform them that the financing fell through and that they need to finance to a different lender, and that's usually at a much higher interest rate. Of course. The majority of victims end up financing at a rate that is 5% higher than what others with the same credit would pay. If the victim had a trade-in, The dealer usually sells it or tells them they sold it, so they're pressured to keep the car. Regardless of your credit worthiness, always have a car loan prearranged before visiting the dealership so you know exactly what kind of rates you qualify for. Never take possession of a vehicle unless the car loan is finalized. Make sure that you see the financing has been approved firsthand. If they ask you to sign a borrowed car agreement, that's a sure sign the financing hasn't been finished yet. Definitely a sure sign. The good news is is that you can easily spot a dealer scam. This begs the question, well, why do dealers do this kind of thing? Well, interestingly, contrary to what many people think, dealers make most of their money on these kinds of scams rather than the sale of the car itself. Sure. The car is simply a product to be sold that unscrupulous dealers find a lot of ways to add tons of other junk and fees to. So, friends, if you never want to miss an upcoming show while you're visiting our website, thehomeworkguy.com, sign up for show notifications directly from us by clicking the yellow button for content notifications. I send out a reminder email for all new shows, which you can check out yourself and also forward to family and friends. For those of you wanting to skip all the nonsense that we talked about today, I look forward to speaking with you directly about our hassle-free car buying service. It's the best there is. It's easy to find at thehomeworkguy.com. Nobody ever regrets going this route. 
Thanks, everyone, for coming back. And to our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the Homework Guy team. God bless you all. Thanks for listening.